Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take your top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them out in bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some scary stories and some good ones. First up, Japanese court convicts Bitcoin tax evader trader gets a year in prison plus a fine of $200,000. So the question has to be asked, is this just the first step being started in Japan? And is it going to be global for people who try to evade crypto taxes? On top of that, we're going to take a look at a nice little story which talks about U.S. retail investors more bullish on Cardano than Bitcoin. So states a survey from Voyager. And of course, when I take a look at this, uh, the only expression I have is, well, of course it is because it's Cardano. And uh, we'll get into exactly why it is. And it has nothing to do with technicals. So we'll take a look at all that. First, take a look at what's going on the market. So today it is still March 13th. When you watch this, it'll be March 14th, though. Uh, because I will be driving back to El Paso, Texas. Uh, we just got done with everything with uh, for this investment property and everything's gonna be rolled out. So uh, I'll actually do a, a quick little, I, I need to do a quick recording of the of the home just so everybody can see it. But uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Anyhow, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So one chain is not number one. I will tell you that right now. Let me redo this, reconfigure. Oh, there it was. So Bitcoin, let me blow this up so you can see it. Uh, as you remember, uh, Bitcoin actually did pretty great yesterday, and we were we blew past sixty thousand. Now we're at sixty one two. As of as of uh, right now, it is uh, God. What is it? Almost seven p.m. Houston, Texas time. So uh, that's great. Let's see if it can sustain. I don't see it going to uh, go up at much higher. Maybe maybe sixty three, maybe sixty four. But you're gonna see a lot of people taking profits. That's just how it works out, right? Once we hit all time highs, it, it is interesting. My friend George talked to me about this. He said, you know, what's interesting is that. When we hit 50,000, there was a huge amount of people who took profits. It was like a psychological thing. And they just, you know, they dropped it pretty far. He goes, but with 60,000, you don't see as many people taking profits right now. Now, different parts of the world are just waking up. Uh, so we'll see how it happens. But usually on a Sunday, we see a big, uh, big little bit of a dip because people uh, do what they do and uh, they need money. So good for them. Anyhow, everything else is up, but uh, that's just what's going on. So this is all great, and we're all happy, right? Everybody's happy. Everybody's making money. This is fantastic. But it really comes down to this. It's not how much you make. It's how much you keep or think that you're keeping. And that's going to play into our next article, which we're going to talk about right now. This is important uh, because I don't want this to happen to anybody. I don't want people to be audited like I was uh, with the IRS. Just make sure you pay your taxes. That's about it. And if you don't think they, they're like, oh, they don't know, trust me. If you've gone to an exchange at any time and you've gotten any kind of cryptocurrency, they know. Now, if you one of those people who, like, in 2010 got Bitcoin from some crazy ATM, I don't even know if ATMs were around that time, or, you know, some miner gave it to you, you're good, right? They don't have to report and squat. But uh, if you've used an exchange in any way, shape, or form, any kind of KYC, AML, where you were shown your ID, your government knows. That's all I can tell you. Not a... Not tax advice, obviously. So what happened here? This is a crazy story. Uh, first of all, the judge concluded that this man, uh, this is Ma uh, Mr. Matsuda, didn't file accurate tax declaration knowingly on his Bitcoin trading activity. Per court documents, Matsuda didn't declare the period 2017-2018. So that's what's interesting on the, this case. First of all, it wasn't very recent. They went back three, four years ago and said, hey, we noticed that you didn't uh, disclose all your filings. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, why don't you come into court and talk to us about it? And uh, here we are. The courts say that the office uh, worker falsified data on his tax emissions because he claimed he had just earned uh, $11,000 in profits or you know, 1.2 million yen, sure. In reality, he received uh, $678,000. So he's like, yeah, listen, I'm going to report this 11,000 bucks, but uh, the 678,000, I'm, I'm just going to let that one slide. I'm sure you guys won't find out about it. And they did, of course, right? So here's the thing, just between us. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, and I'm definitely not a CPA. I, I leave that to the smarter people. But uh, if it's like a little bit of flub here and there, IRS isn't going to care too much ab about you, right? Uh, but when you say that, and, and they look at the records like, man, this guy made over a half a million dollars in trades, and he's only going to give us 11? Well, that's not going to fly with us. We're the government. Uh, we're the Japanese government. We're the American government. We're the Canadian government. We're whoever. We're going to get this guy, and we're going to make an example out of him. And that's exactly what happened. So 
in this situation. Just don't let this happen to you. That's all I can say. And uh, again, if it's like something small, again, if you if you come to me and say, oh, but, but Rob over at Digital Asset News told me that I can get away with it. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that the IRS usually likes to go for um, medium-sized fishes. We'll, we'll just say that. The big fishes, uh, usually those guys, uh, like like a Jeff Bezos, they can outlawyer them all day long. So good luck with that. But the IRS, you know, if they want to get somebody, medium fish, small fishes, maybe they're not so much. I don't know. All right. So anyhow, moving down. Uh, when his lawyers on the hearings interviewed Matsuda, he claimed that he didn't have clarity. He didn't have clarity on calculating the profits of incomes earned from cryptos. So basically he's saying, I just didn't understand. So whoops, I didn't know I couldn't do that. And they're like, yeah, that's not a defense. Now to this lawyers allegedly already pledged for pardon, as they stated that Matsuda submitted petitions to amend the issue and file the tax documents properly. So he even said, look, I know I messed up. I'm really sorry. Uh, let me just, you know, redo this. Give me a mulligan and I'll pay you what you want. They're like, no, come to court and we'll figure this out. And this is what they figured out. Uh, <laughs> they said, look, you're going to pay us $200,000 and we're going to stick you in jail for a year. That's what it comes down to. The legal case, the first of its kind in Japan, making Matsuda the first person in the land of the rising sun to be sentenced for being a Bitcoin tax evader. And uh, this legal proceedings started in 2020. Now, it doesn't say exactly when in 2020 this started, but let's just say it was, uh, you know, middle of the year, August, yeah, whatever else. So, you know, that's like nine months or so, um, six months, seven months. And this is just some small guy, right? So when people talk about like the XRP and SEC uh, type of lawsuit, that's going to be over soon. I don't think it's happening. Uh, I've been through a lawsuit, took me three years. And uh, I'm just some, I'm just nobody. And it took that long for depositions and discovery and the back and forth and it's just it's a long time and this is again just me i'm nobody so anyhow let me know what you think in the comments section about that and uh that of course will lead me to the thing i want to talk about which is look if you're gonna if you need to do your taxes i know it's stressful i hate doing taxes and i especially hate trying to look at all that spreadsheet for all the trades i did this year and figured all that out so what i use is cryptotrader.tax friends of the show and uh, if you want, you can go to this. I'm going to link this in the description. You can sign up for a $300 uh, free tax report. Uh, they have different levels. This is their ultimate, ultimate unlimited tax report. If you need something simple, it's much cheaper. Uh, there's a link in the description. Uh, Dan viewers get 20% off, so use that. I've used this two years in a row, and it's been fantastic. I put the data in. I get the API or the CSV from all the exchanges, and then I stick it in there. It gives me a readout. I send. I click a button. It sends it to my CPA. My CPA says, "Rob, you owe a lot of money." And then I like, well, that's usually every year, Janice. So who cares? And uh, that's pretty much how it goes. But I don't have to spend so much god awful time going through those reports. So definitely, if you think that time is money, definitely take a look at CryptoTrader.tax. Also, if you don't want to pay taxes uh, at all on your crypto, just put it in a Roth IRA. That's what I do. So if you got like a 401k. Uh, old 401k, 403b, military TSB, or 457, you can roll it over. Talk to the people that I trust. Link in the description, 30 days for free. I even did a video, that's about 20 minutes, explaining what a, uh, a Roth, a SEP, and a traditional IRA uh, actually are and how that works with the cryptocurrency. But basically it goes like this. The money that you have that's been already been taxed by the government from your job or whatever else, you're going to buy uh, crypto. Uh, it's going to, of course, it's going to go into your, your uh, IRA and uh, they're not going to tax you on the gain. So if Bitcoin goes from 50,000 or 60,000 to a million or whatever people think it's going to, I don't think it's going that high. Let's say, let's say 150,000, right? They can't tax you on the $100,000 gain from, or 90,000 from 60,000 to 150. And that's what's great. Also, I've got Ethereum and Polkadot. What's great about that is that uh, with those two, I, uh, in quarter two, they're going to allow staking in my Roth IRA. And all those gains, plus Ethereum and Polkadot, uh, are tax-free. So, just saying. All right. And uh, that is it. And just, <laughs> I I, I'm, I ordered this shirt. Because uh, people are like, Rob, why you shill Crypto Trader and, and iTrust and Voyager and whatever else? I'm like, because I believe in them. All three of them. Uh, heavily. So, yeah, sure, I'm a shill. I mean, I don't care. So, this... So every time I start talking about this, I'm just going to whip this shirt out, and uh, that'll be that. Anyhow, let me just think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. So 
This one is really quick. It was a survey, and I'll, I'll, I'll just summarize it real quick. Survey by Voyager. They said, which one do you think you are, is the most bullish on? And of course, people were like uh, Cardano, which they didn't believe. So they, uh, you know, they had to ask people, and this was the survey that they came out with. 31% uh, said, hey, they're the most bullish on Cardano. And you can see it. Let me blow this up so you can see. I thought this was interesting, actually. And unfortunately, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it uh, it really plays into my own bias because uh, I'm biased on this. I'm biased on this show. That's just how it is. But it says here, which crypto is your most bullish on? Cardano is far and away uh, number one. Look at that. Bitcoin is number two at 22%. Uh, Ethereum, Polkadot, Voyager, Ripple, which I guess would be XRP. Chainlink, Voyager, Lumen, and then others, whatever that is. So yeah, that's a pretty good deal. So there's, there's two things to talk about. First of all, I'm super biased. I hope you know that. So everything that I talk about on this channel is because I own it. Uh, I don't usually talk about too many things that I don't own or am not at least interested in owning. So you won't, uh, lately, you won't hear me talk about non-fungible tokens and the artwork. I don't get it. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be great, but right now I think it's in a bubble and it's just crazy, crazy prices. I just can't get into that. Uh, but the stuff that I talk about, either, again, I own it, or I'm really interested into it, or I'm probably going to buy it at some point. So uh, just like other people will say, I'm not biased. This. Sure, whatever. But uh, I am. So that's just me being honest. And uh, the second thing, when I take a look at this, and uh, people say, well, we're really, you know, uh, bullish on Cardano. I mean, why, why not? Bitcoin, I mean, Bitcoin is the safest bet in the cryptocurrency verse, right? Uh, everybody knows about it. Everybody knows it's going to go up. No one knows how much is going to go up. But uh, really, if you're just getting in or you've been in for a while, it doesn't matter. If you look at it, you're like, which one can I have the most gains? Well, I think Bitcoin's going to 150. So that's only a 3x, right? Ethereum's at 2,000. I think it could potentially go up to 10 to 10k. So you're looking at a 5x. Uh, Voyager, again, me shilling. Uh, that is at around five bucks right now. And I think it's going up to. Uh, between 30 and 75 bucks. So that's way more. Um, so when people talk about, well, I'm bullish on this, I mean, just look at uh, the potential returns. So why wouldn't you? And then of course, all the different news that we hear about, of course, Voyager with their loyalty program, Cardano coming out with uh, uh, the Gogan era, the Mary Hard Fork, uh, smart contracts, uh, the uh, ERC-20 converter. I mean, all the things that they're doing and just they have a great, huge team. The only thing about Cardano, and this is just between us, is that, um, so a friend of mine, who he, he or she wanted to create their own token, and they actually went to a couple different uh, places to say, hey, can you, we get this token going? And uh, Cardano was one of them. And they're like, we, we can't do that. We we can't get native assets here and you can't really gain traction on that because we are just kind of building on top of what's going on. So when people talk about, well, no one really builds on Cardano. Yes, I know. It's because with the uh, Gogan era coming in with on the roadmap and with the hard fork, what this means is that the developers are going to actually be able to start doing it and the native assets are going to come uh, alongside that. But right now, uh, you can't really do that much uh, as far as Cardano is concerned. Now, that's that's just the uh, information that I hear. I could be totally wrong, and uh, don't uh, crucify me. I hold a lot of Cardano, a lot. I actually have uh, two Cardano staking pools, which you can find over at danteachescrypto.com. Danteaches just click on ADA, uh, ADA staking, and I'll tell you all about it. But uh, you have to understand, I invest in people and uh, when I talk a lot about a certain project, it's because I believe in the person or the people behind it. That's why I'm big on Celsius and Alex Mashinsky. I'm big on uh, Steve Ehrlich and Voyager. I'm big on Charles Hoskinson and uh, Cardano. I'm big on Dr. Gavin Wood and Polkadot. And uh, it's just because of those people. And also, I'm, I'm getting bigger on, uh, on uh, uh, Swissborg. Uh, I had uh, Alex Fossil. Uh, on the show about a week and a half ago uh, and uh, he was great answered all the questions and uh, I just see them as like the European Voyager so uh, that's just what it is so again I think for this one it only makes sense that people are going to be uh, bullish on Cardano look it's only a buck you know so if you're looking at like well I could buy 
this for a dollar, or I can buy Litecoin for $90, or Ethereum for $2,000, or Bitcoin for $60,000. Where's this? Who? Cardano? And they, he used to be the uh, uh, co founder of, of Ethereum, and then he started a, a, a this. Okay. And then how many people they have, and, and uh, how many divisions they have, and, and what have they done lately, and what's their roadmap, and what's their team? I mean, it just all kind of comes together. So I see that one as, of course, it's like a dumb moment for me. Anyhow, so uh, look, that is it for today. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, found some uh, value into it, uh, give it a thumbs up. That helps tremendously, and I really appreciate it. Also, consider subscribing uh, because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that is it for today. So enjoy your Sunday. Let's see what the market does. I'm guessing a dump, and uh, we'll go from there. So thanks so much. See you on the next one.